Hi there, Life here from uh, iTech Office Technology. Uh, welcome to another tutorial in the uh, Konica Minolta BISUB series, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, first we're going to cover off the different buttons on the screen. You can see at the very top right the menu button, that's basically the uh, home screen button. Uh, takes you back to the main menu, so whatever screen that you're in, just press the home button and you're back to the home screen. Uh, the next one down, enlarge display, that's just to make uh, the display bigger. So uh, that's what it means. Uh, the guidance button might be very uh, useful when you're in a certain area. You can see if I press it now nothing happens. But if I go into any of the screens and need help with anything, for example, if you're into any option, when you press the guidance button, you get the help menu up or the guidance, if you like, for that specific uh, screen that you're in. So, very handy function. Uh, the access button that is designed for uh, logging in or logging out if you have uh, authentication enabled as in a, if you need a username password to log in. Uh, if you don't have that set up you don't need to worry about that button. Uh, the interrupt button that's basically for uh, if you have say nothing happens now because the machine is idle but if someone has started for example a big uh, copy job that is going to take a long time you can hit that interrupt button and you can actually interrupt and do a job in between. You basically stop the stop the job that is currently going to do another job. Uh, the last one on the side here on the right is the preview button. Uh, that is for giving you a preview of a uh, scan or a copy job before it's actually completed. Uh, that's quite useful for example imagine if you're going to scan a document and you want to make 100% uh, sure that it looks perfect before you scan and send it to an email for example you can use the preview button for that and I'll show you that a little bit later uh, the reset button is just to if you've gone in for example to the copy screen and changed something and you just hit reset to reset the settings back to the default settings uh, I use that all the time the stop button is to stop a current job that is uh, going. For example, if you started a copy job and you want to stop it, you use the stop button. The start button is just to start the process or start what you're doing. Uh, this one here, these new panels don't ha actually have a physical keypad on them as standard. So this one here with the 10 keypad, you press that one and you get a uh, keypad up on the uh, touch screen. Uh, the 1 and 2, uh, what that is, is if I go back to the home screen, 1 uh, brings up the scanning screen and 2, they're like a shortcut or a quick guide if you like. So I think number 1 is set up for scan to uh, uh, scanning, number 2 is for copy screen. So you can see if I press number 1 I get the scanning screen up, number two copy screen, and then the power button is just to power it uh, on and off. Uh, next we're gonna cover off um, just these three buttons at the top. Uh, if I go into accessibility, that's just uh, some settings in there where you can adjust the brightness or uh, uh, a couple of other things like uh, displays and sounds. Sound could be quite uh, good too if uh, the sound is driving you crazy, you don't like the beeping, you can turn that off completely in there, uh, which is uh, handy. Uh, the counter button, press the counter button and that will display the uh, counter information of the, or the meter count on the machine. And back to the home screen again, the job list very useful uh, as well. Uh, the job list will display all active or current jobs in here. You can see there's nothing in there. But you can also go into the log and see any uh, jobs that have been uh, completed in there. 
but if you happen to if you have an act, list of active jobs in there you can go and prioritize them on here or delete them if you didn't want them to print uh, and so on next thing we're going to cover off the uh, copy screen so how to do a very basic copy if I go into the copy screen uh, to make a very basic copy we'll put a uh, original into the uh, top feeder just face up in the in the feeder and hit start that's all you need to do to do a basic copy uh, next I'm going to cover off the different functions on the copy screen so if you wanted to uh, uh, adjust any of the copy settings uh, I'm going to go through this first one here text slash photo printed uh, you can tap on that one and that's basically describing what the original is normally you don't need to change this because the machine will do a good job with uh, with the default text slash photo setting but there is a like a photo option or a map option if it's a map you're copying and it might give you a slighter, slightly better result if you uh, change that one the next one color it says it's set to black as default but if I wanted to change it to color if I wanted to make a full color photocopy I can select that there and there's also an option there for two color or single color you can have a play with that yourself if you're interested in seeing how that works the next one uh, density basically to lighten or darken the original so just tap uh, increase the darkness if you want to make it darker or lighter uh, or standard the next one is paper and paper size so it's paper type and paper size so if I go into there you can see the the different paper trays laid out so in on this particular machine there's a paper there's a paper tray one two and three number one has i4 in it and yeah they've got, all got a4 in it and this one here on the side that's the multi multi bypass tray on the side of the machine so you can select any of those but generally you don't need to select it because it'll just pick up the auto selection the then we move on to the uh, zoom button for reduce and enlarge you can have some common ones here you know if we want to reduce from an A3 to an A4 uh, or if we want to enlarge A4 to A3 and uh, anything in between you can set the zoom manually or select any of those options in there uh, the uh, next one is the duplex combine so I'll select that one there's a few different options in there uh, this the default one is just single sided so single sided original and it'll give you a single sided output or single sided copy the next one is when you have a single sided original and you get a double sided copy and uh, the opposite so a double sided original will turn into single sided copies or double sided to double sided and there's also options there for the uh, setting the binding position whether it's portrait portrait or landscape and how you want it bound so generally you don't need to touch this if it's just a normal portrait copy but uh, if it's in landscape mode you might see that you know if it's upside down on the other side it's a indication that your binding position is wrong and you just need to change it there's also an option for combine so this is not a duplex single sided double sided but it will actually if you select that two in one it will actually reduce two pages and put it onto one page and the same with four in one eight in one it will just combine those number of pages and reduce it down and put it onto one page so that's uh, that one the next option is finishing and you may not have all these options on your machine uh, the standard machine will have the grouping and sorting option so group means uh, all page ones together 
all page twos together whereas sort is more like a document it will, it will be sorted into like what page one two three one two three for multiple copies and this particular machine has also has stapling and folding available so I can choose a uh, corner staple so that's in the top left corner or we can do a two position staple with two staples on the side uh, if I go into the position setting you can see where that position of the staple will be or if I turn off the staple I've also got a fold bind option here which will allow me to make booklets so I can do a half fold without a staple or I can do a center staple and fold uh, which is the booklet option and we've also got a trifold uh, option there which is for uh, like a letter fold or a DL brochures that kind of thing so these are all available when copying on the copy screen and uh, basically all along here these are all the standard options but we've also got an application button here with the more advanced options I'm not going to go through those in this quick guide but I'm just going to click on it and just show you that there's a whole you can slide and drag across here and there's a whole range of different options uh, in there for more advanced uh, use uh, some of the common ones I normally uh, go through would be like a ID copy function for driver's licenses or IDs and but there's other other things in there as well and the last thing I'm going to cover on the copy screen is of course how do you make more than one copy and that is up here in the number of sets if I wanted to make five copies I can just tap on the number of sets and that will bring up the keypad and I can select how many copies I would like or you can also press the keypad that will do the same thing it will bring up the keypad on the screen and you can type in uh, a number so that's it for the copy screen uh, now we're going to cover off the uh, scan fax screen so I'm going to select the uh, scan fax button and I'm going to go through these basic options with you uh, if I'm going to scan something uh, in this case I've got an email set up there so to scan a very simple document to email all I need to do is to press the email in this case I've set up my uh, own email address in the address book so I'll just select that one put the document face up in the document feeder and hit start and that document is now uh, emailed uh, to me with the default standard settings uh, if you want to make any adjustments to the settings I'm going to go through these and explain what they are so same thing again from the address book I'm going to select my uh, email address and down the side here these are similar to what you see on the copy screen the first one is uh, simplex duplex so it's default to single sided if the document that I'm scanning is double sided I'm going to select double sided or there was also an option in there for cover plus two sided which means that your first page is single sided but all remaining pages are double sided so you can select the option you need in there the next one along is called resolution uh, we normally set the machines default to 300 by 300 dpi which is a standard uh, scan resolution for a text document if you need any more detail than that you could increase the resolution which will give you more detail but the uh, file size will also be bigger so especially when you're scanning to email you want to be uh, aware of the uh, file size and not make that too big uh, unless you have to the next one along is the uh, color setting so you can scan the document in auto color or full color that will scan the they're both color options grayscale or black if you want if that's what you need the next option is for the file type 
So I'm going to click on that and as you can see there we the default file type is compact PDF. Uh, that will be it's a standard PDF but it's much smaller than uh, in file size. It's about 80% uh, smaller than a standard PDF so it's very handy for uh, compacting the the scanned document to be emailed. But we can select uh, PDF, TIFF is another option, XPS, PPTX to create the PowerPoint presentation or uh, perhaps you you need a JPEG if you're scanning uh, images or photos and compact XPS. On the side here this is quite a useful function. We have something called multi-page and page separation. You can see multi-page is highlighted there. What that means is that if I put uh, say a 10-page document into the feeder on top, just go back into my scan option, uh, that's where I was. If I select the multi-page, yeah, you put a 10-page document into the feeder you get one email with one PDF file that is uh, 10 pages long. In some cases you may want to change this to page separation and you can see that so I can separate the pages for every single page that means that if I put 10 pages in there I, I will get 10 files that are one page each and I've got an option there of sending all files as one email or one file per email. So if I selected one file per email I would get 10 emails with one PDF file in each one and one page in each PDF. If I selected that one you'd get one email with 10 attachments in it with all one page each. And if I change that one to a uh, num say two then you would get a new page or a new PDF file I should say for every two pages so each PDF file would be two pages long quite tricky but very handy if you need that kind of uh, function there's also a PDF detail setting with a couple of more advanced uh, options in there that I'm not going to go through. The next one is the scan size. Generally you don't need to, if you're scanning a standard size documents, you don't need to worry about this because the machine will s determine the size automatically. But of course you could select any other sizes or even a custom size. If you need to type in the size of the document, you can type that in there and scan a custom size. The last one on the screen here is the file name and subject and from address and this is quite handy if you scan to email and you want to give the uh, the uh, PDF file a uh, meaningful name. So I'm just going to select my email first, go into the file name to show you what I mean see this file name here has like a it's a default generated file name that is not very meaningful if you want to send this attachment to say you want to forward it to a client or someone else so I can type that tap that little keyboard there you see the file name in here hit the C button to clear the file name and I can call it my my file or give it a meaningful name so you know what it is hit OK on that and that would be the name of the PDF attachment you could also change the subject and the from address if you wanted that by following the same thing hit the keyboard uh, icon or select from the list also exactly the same as on the copy screen there's an application button so we can click on that and that's got more advanced settings in there such as watermarks and uh, separate scan that's another one that is useful or a book scan for scanning books and but that will be covered in a more advanced uh, uh, training video and uh, that's basically everything covered 
from the scan screen. The next one we're going to cover off is the uh, user box option. So we'll select user box and you can think of the user box as like a folder of documents and uh, you can see I created one user box in here earlier just so we've got something to work with. If I have created one called demo so a user box it's like a folder and I'll double click on that one and you can see there's nothing in there at the moment but I'm going to show you how we can store a document in there. So I've already put a document face up in the document feeder and I can then select this option on the side here I'll select save. I can then modify any of these uh, buttons underneath if I want it double sided or change the resolution uh, color black and white uh, and so on. But I'm just going to leave all the settings as default the only thing I'm going to change is the file name so you can see that's got an automatically generated file name not very meaningful so I'm going to press the C button to clear the name and I'm just going to call this uh, document uh, test oops if I know how to type test and hit OK and start so the document that I had in the document feeder will now be saved into this folder and I can double click on this folder again so I'm going to double tap on that and you can see now that there's one document in there called test and uh, another very handy function is so of course because uh, in, in these user boxes you could store all types of uh, documents there might be forms or brochures or PDF files or documents user guides whatever uh, you might need to store in there so now when I've got a document in there I can select the document and you get a more menu options down the side here you get an option to once I've got a document in there I can copy it I can move and delete it I can send it which means I could send it as a fax or an email directly from here or I can print it so I'm just going to select that document today and I'm going to print show you how to print or this document so I just hit the print document print button I can make any changes to the print here or select up there how many sets or copies I wish and hit start and the document that I had in that user box will now uh, uh, print out. So this is very handy for documents that uh, don't change very often. Documents that you can store in there uh, and reprint uh, as you need them. Perfect for forms uh, and static documents. And uh, that's it for the uh, user box. I hope you enjoyed our uh, tutorial and uh, if you want to see more of this please uh, subscribe uh, to our channel to get uh, regular updates as we post uh, new uh, training videos. Talk to you soon!